Yo, welcome back. In this video, we are going to be talking about primary keys and a couple other constraints and how to add them to the create table statement. The reason being is because we have these columns in here, but we haven't told SQL Server which one's the primary key and we haven't really described any of the columns in any detail. The very first thing I wanna do is start with the primary key. But first, I'm going to change this back to varchar 50 and that way everything's back to how it was. Now the column we want to be the primary key is this ID column. And there's a couple different ways you can add constraints, but one of the easiest ways is to add them as a column attribute. So when you have an attribute, it describes the column. And we put these right after the column. And you don't use commas or any kind of punctuation. All you do is put a space. So it's really simple. Just go after this int right here and say primary key. Primary key. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. That's literally all you gotta do to say it's the primary key. But the downside to just leaving it at primary key is that it's not going to automatically generate new numbers. And the way to do that is to say that this is the identity column. And you can also see that when we have multiple attributes, we can just separate them by spaces. As well as that, when you say primary key, it's automatically going to be not null and unique. But we might wanna add some of those attributes to some of the other columns. For example, this name here, we might wanna say a name is required. So to do that, you can just say not null. Same for the species. Another attribute we can use is unique. The thing is here, we don't really have a good column to use this attribute on, so let's add another column. We'll add an email address for us to contact this animal or, or the animal's owner, if that would be more appropriate. So we'll just say contact email, and we'll need to add a comma after the previous column. And for this one, we'll say not null, and unique. And obviously we're going to want to throw in a data type here too. <laughs> we'll just go with varchar 50. Now something about emails is that emails can actually be longer than this, but in the practical world most emails are going to be way under 50 characters. <laughs> so if you make a larger varchar, you increase the probability of people putting fake huge emails into your database. So generally I think 50 characters is just fine. Now you can see that we've described a lot of the other stuff in this table, and the table becomes a lot more like what we imagined when we were designing this. So let's run this and just make sure everything works fine. Okay, commands completed successfully. Now let's go to our object explorer and see how these things show up. So let's go to databases, subscribe, tables, animals. And you can see all the columns right here. You can see that this is the primary key, that's what that little key symbol is, and you can find all of our attributes right here. Not null, not null, not null. The unique actually goes in the keys. So unique key right there. And then there's the primary key as well, which is the same as this one right here. So that's a pretty rough introduction to column attributes and how to use them. There are some other attributes you're going to want to use eventually, including foreign keys, default, which is actually going to give a default value if you leave something out when you insert data into this table. And then there's also an attribute known as sparse, which can be used for nulls. So if a lot of the data for a column is null, you can use the sparse attribute and it will help save storage storage. But we will talk about all that in the upcoming videos, so don't worry about it for right now. Just focus on what we did here, and in the upcoming videos we'll be adding some more to this table, and everything will go well. So thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next video. And as always, please be sure to click like and subscribe.